Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Kay Junkerth. I own Fitness Junkie Training, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, Stephen Selly, uh, Energy Steve, better known now. And to tell you guys a quick story about Steve, so I, I had my own dunk journey. If you followed me for a while, um, you've seen that I've posted dunking and stuff like that on social media. Um, I binge watched Steven's uh, <laughs> dunk life YouTube videos for like three months straight when I was trying to get my first dunks. Um, and man, it, like the passion he's had for that, like, and it's just his passion for life is infectious. Um, mm-hmm. And so I reached out to Steve, you know, I, I want him to share with you guys how he's created so much energy in his life, like how much, how he has so much energy. Um, so first and foremost, thank you for being on Steve. I really appreciate you. Um, so thank you for being on Elevate Everyday Podcast. We might as well hop right into it. So Let's do it. <laughs> very first question, like where does all your energy come from and how, how can the listeners like cultivate more energy in their life? Wow. First of all, thank you so much for having me, dude. It's been a pleasure going back and forth with you. Absolutely love your energy. It's so awesome to be on this podcast. Elevate Everyday is right hand in hand with how I live. So it's really cool to see what you're doing. I'm excited you're bringing your magic to the world through this podcast, dude. So I'm honored to be on the podcast. It's awesome. I appreciate it. I appreciate um, it. When it comes to the energy, I'll give a little backstory how I got to the word energy and what happened. But dunking, as you know, was my dream and went through that. And once you got to the higher stages of like, like I'm sure you're in the training world, is like when you're trying to push yourself past these limits, you start to biohack every single piece of energy that you can so i started to notice it's like my nutrition i could dial in on my sleep i could dial in on my training my awareness like it's not always about pushing myself so hard in the gym it's like how acutely can i be aware of my body to say okay today's a rest day where's that line because if you're in the training world like me a lot of my followers and people that i interact with we're ready to push like dunking is about pushing the limit so it's like but you can't just redline the whole time you have to be smart and know how much to push so yeah. Through that process, I realized, and starting to train people and them asking me questions, I'd say, like, how was your training today? They'd be like, I didn't feel that great. I didn't feel that explosive. I'd be like, okay, how did you sleep? And they'd be like, not great. I'm like, okay, why didn't you sleep? Did you go to bed late? And then it always worked its way down to something energetic where they're like, okay, well, I have this mentality or I have this belief. And I'm like, we got to work on that. So I, I realized I didn't want to train the mechanics because there was people that were doing that and coaches. And I'm like, I want to help you find how you maximize your energy and it's your flow of life. So that kind of answers the question is when you master your flow of what works for you, for example, part of dunk life for me was going to bed early, waking up early. That's what I love. Like I felt the best. So when I started doing that, it was hard to be like, Hey, what are you doing on a Friday night? I'm like, I'm going to bed. I'm dunking in the morning. And people are like, what? But (laughs) that kept my energy super high because that's how I lived. But working with people, energy coaching, or just learning about myself is like everybody's flow is different. I like to intermittent fast and I feel so good doing that. And I tried other ways. So it's like, everybody's body's different. There's a lot of universal principles, like we need sleep, uh, but not everybody sleeps at the same time. So things like that is how I'd say that's where my energy comes from is really getting clear on who I am, how I operate and my goals. And another part of the energy is that goal of dunking is so inspiring that it, it really elevates my energy. Right. When it comes to other people that maybe not be inspired, like, I'm um, like, do you even want to dunk? Is it something cool? Is it a hobby? Or is it something that's like, you can't live without trying it, right? So it's like getting clear on why you're doing it will allow that energy to flow through you. So my answer to be, how can people cultivate more energy like me is, is get to know yourself. Yeah. How can you get to know what you love and get clear on what you do? Because the clearer you can get on what you love to do, that energy will come from within and you will feel that flow flow through you. And then it's about removing all distractions or saying, saying no to things that are saying no to yourself. So when you say no to someone else, you're saying yes to yourself and vice versa. If someone's like, hey, do you want to go out tonight? You want to do this? And you say yes. It's not that you're saying no if you don't want to do it. When you say no, you're actually saying yes to yourself. Yeah. So just saying yes to yourself. And uh, yeah, that's my answer for that one. It, that's an awesome answer. And there, there's a whole lot to unpack with that. I, I wish I could like yeah. put, put little sticky notes on some of the things that you said. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing I want to say too, because, you know, I'm sure um, most people listening to this already know you are, you have a pretty big following, but um, I want to let people know that are listening, maybe my audience that, that doesn't know who you are, 
that so steven's thrown down some crazy dunks like this is why i was so inspired when i followed him he was throwing down like windmill dunks like all these crazy things off the backboard these crazy lobs that'll throw down and you're what like five nine five ten something like that five nine and three quarters without yeah. shoes i like to say and then five ten with shoes so yeah so, i can give some stats on that real quick is that when i started couldn't touch the rim i remember high school in like senior year i was jump. i was on a jv team in my sophomore year terrible never believed in myself saw my friend attempting to dunk it felt like a gift you're either a freak jumper or you're not you're either a dunker or you're not and then at the end of high school i'm like let me just try to touch the rim Drowning, jumping, 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 touch the rim for the first time. Like, whoa, let me see if I, if I did this in one day. Let me see what happens if I train, started training, grab the rim, grab the rim, grab the rim, finally hung on the rim. And that was like the first dream come true. So I'm like, me, 5'10", white Jewish kid, hanging on the same <laughs> rim that these NBA, years, NBA players hang on. Like, that is wild. So yeah. then that really opened me up to uh, the possibility. Then I found Andy Nicholson. Shout out to him. He runs the dunk camp. He was 5'10", white, and 39 at the time. And the reason why I point out he's white is because for me, my little mind was like, if they weren't my race or didn't look like me, I didn't believe it was possible. So he right. helped me make it possible. Like seeing is believing uh, back then. Now believing is seeing. Whatever I believe, I can materialize. So quick story, grabbed the rim, got my first dunk, um, and I increased my vertical a total of 14 inches at least. And my max I ever touched on a vertex was 42.5 inches, which was touching 11 foot two, I believe, 11 foot 1.5 or 11 foot 2.5. My reach was like 91 inches, but nice. that's 14 inches. So think about that. That's a foot and two inches. And that's touching a vertex, which I think I may have jumped at like an inch higher on a dunk or something. because It's not easy to do. But yeah, so I went, when people say, can you dunk? I'm like, if you had 14 inches on your vertical, I think you could do it. Nobody in my family could dunk. Nobody had hops. My dad was an athlete, but not a jumper at all. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I think um what I wanted to to where I wanted to go with that was basically like I think what inspired me so much about your dunk journey was I was like, this is a guy that is like maximizing his potential. Mm. <laughs> I feel like you can you can just see it come through. Like sure, you know, yeah. there, there's other dunkers where they're like, you know, six foot something and they've got this natural just like bounce to them. But you could tell that with you, like it didn't just come naturally. It was like, this is a guy that's like honing in on every little thing that he can possibly hone in on to maximize yes. the dream that he has of, of dunking. Um, And whether you 100%. are like, yeah. And whether you do have a dream of dunking or if this is not something you're interested in, like that is why I wanted Steve on the podcast, mm. because I, I believe that anything that you really set your mind to, you know, that's a skill where like, you're going to do whatever it takes and find all these granular things that you can work on um, to, to like maximize what you're going for. Wow. And that, that's what I want like for us to speak on today. And, and yeah, like that's what inspired me honestly about you. Thank you so much. And I, I, I touched on it, which I said at first it was seeing was believing. So like I saw Andy do it and then I believed it was possible, but through the whole journey I removed and completely transformed that viewpoint that believing is seeing. So if you believe you can do it, you will see it actualized. Yeah. So I got to this point where I got to this point where every time I got up to a robot, like, can I achieve this? It was like, can I get leaner and jump higher? Can I hit this dunk? Can I do this thing that's been so, and then I would do it over and over again. I got to this point where like, okay, it seems like the more, the harder the challenge, the more I just have to believe in myself. That's it. So it like removed all my limits. I truly be believed I can do anything. And it's just about if you're willing to believe it, if you can get yourself to believe it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I try to get my clients to, really adopt an identity that they're like an athlete or a fit person, especially if they've never been that in their life. Because like you're saying, like you have to believe first and your, your mind is so powerful. Like when you do believe that you can do something like that's going to make, you're going to change your physiology just because of what your mind is thinking. So, wow. Yeah, dude, I have a really good quote. I don't know if you're that I uh, found myself. I don't know if your clients are all dunkers, but it's like, you don't become a dunker once you dunk you become a dunker in your training. Like you don't become an elite athlete and then be start training like an elite athlete. You start training like an elite athlete and to become yeah. one. So it's like, you are the elite athlete now. And that's something I love about what you're doing. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. And then one thing you, I wanted to also kind of point out that you said too, is like just the, there's two points on it, on the energy 
um, answer that you gave. One is like the biohacking, because, you know, whether you're trying to dunk, whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to put on muscle, whatever the goal is, like there's, like you said, some general principles that are going to help everyone, like virtually everyone, like yes. you know, getting the sleep, you know, um, you know, minimizing stress in some ways, you know, that, mm -hmm. I, that was a big part of like, and I think dunking is a really good example too, because like you said, you see a big difference in your performance on dunking specifically, or like jumping when some of these things are out of line. Like if you get bad sleep or if you're oh, yeah. super stressed out, you know, or other things are going on, you know, there's certain things that yeah. throw you off a lot. And I, I think that like that process of trying to dunk taught probably you similar to me, like at this, when I was trying to do that, I had to really hone in on all those little things. Um, I don't know why, I guess mm -hmm. like with dunking it, it just like, it's a little bit more apparent because, because it's yeah. like, you, you literally go into the gym and you're like, okay, I know exactly why I'm not feeling it today because of these factors, yes. but, but it it's the same for everyone, no matter what your goals are. Right. So like, you know, yeah. learning, learning these things and like honing in on these health principles that are like the general important ones for everyone, like it's going to make you feel a lot better and help you reach your goals. So hundred percent dude. And I think dunking is such a good example. What I used to tell people why I loved it. It's like, I had to be on point with everything. And it's like the peak of that. So for example, your central nervous system has to be firing to jump your hardest. You have yeah. to have the energy, you have to have the, the, the energy to think clearly. Cause if you're, if you're wide awake and feeling energized, you feel like running through a wall. That was really like the dunk thing. If you're not, it's hard to push yourself to, to hit that new level. And then on top of it, I wanted to eat right to be lean as I can. I wanted to sleep right. So I mean, all my habits fall into place because yeah. I had to maximize that day. You have right. to be healthy. You have to be mentally clear. You have to be fueled up correctly. Yet your muscles have to be ready. So it's like, and then you're working against time. Like you can't dunk forever. Your body's going to fade. Right. So it's like, you, you can't, you don't want to prolong progress by saying like, I didn't eat well today. It's like your, your recovery gets faster if you sleep well. Your recovery gets better if you're hydrated well and you eat good nutrients. If you're eating garbage and not hydrated, your body's going to take longer to recover. So it's like all of those things fall into place when you have this huge goal. Oh, and one more thing about the goal is you have to be not only physically healthy, but you have to be pain-free. You can't be jumping pain-free. You have to stretch. Um, and so, yeah, it's like you have to be strong and fast. So it's like dunking was like strong, fast, pain-free, and full of energy. It's like this one goal has all of those factors that I absolutely love that made me like in such a, such a great shape. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing that I, that I also took from, from that process and like getting to, to being able to dunk and just like everything I learned through that, like the things that you realize about like your performance, like what's going to affect your performance in that you can transfer that to anything. Like now, like you said, with like central nervous system, like I know how to like manipulate those things, prime my central nervous system, whether I'm going for a big lift or honestly, like if I have like a, a big call with someone, like, you know, literally for things like this, like I know how to like get myself ready to perform in whatever yeah. way it is, whether it's mentally or physically, honestly. 100%. Dude, that's that's kind of what led to the wrapping. I know that was one of your questions is that I realized dunking was like the ultimate performance. It's like the training, the nutrition, the habits, the lifestyle was for me to perform my best and all those skills. I was like, oh my God, what do I want to apply this to? Yeah. And the thing that came to mind was rapping. I can get into why, but it's like now I'm training again when I haven't been training for like a year because I didn't know where to go, but now it's or where to go. But it's like now I want to train my lungs. And I know that if I train in the mindset that goes into it, I can be an incredible performer in this way. Nice. So um, they, the application, like dunking, I've said it for a long time, was like my expression. I started to learn later in my journey was it was just expressing my full potential. Like you said, I felt like I was able to, I felt this dream and then I got to show it through like, this is what I saw I could do. And now I get to express it and show, share it. Awesome. So super yeah. Fun. yeah. And what, what kind of led to you, you know, since you touched on it, like what kind of led to you reinventing yourself um, and going from like a dunk life vlogger to now rapper? Like what, what led to that process there? Yeah. Love that question. So I, uh, the short story, I'll try to keep it, I'm trying to concise this story so people can get it. But <laughs> when they, when I started blogging, I was in corporate. So I was in a nine to five job, not my energy, not, and I don't mind people doing nine to five, but it was really hampering my flow because I was not getting sunlight. I had to go somewhere every day and be indoors and also like 
I'm very creative, so I like to be very um, spontaneous. So just very difficult for me, not like my authentic self. So then I was like, how do I escape this job? I was already done training and filming myself. Casey Neistat, huge vlogger, was very inspirational to me. And he was vlogging. I'm like, oh, I love making these videos. What if I become a vlogger and blow up? Turned the camera on me, started vlogging, loved it. Uh, didn't really blow up to like uh, be able to quit my corporate job, but it definitely taught me how much I love expressing. I started to notice my fears of like vlogging in public. And I'm like, I had the courage to be like, you know what? I want to document this. This is a cool thought that I'm having right now. I don't, that was like where I felt like I was growing myself, like stepping outside of my comfort zone. Started making music to my vlogs and sort of like making small rap accidents. I'm like, let's make an intro for this thing. The Dunk Life Anthem is a very popular one. Yeah. So that was really cool. It was like an intro to all my vlogs. It just was natural. It was something fun to do. Yeah. Uh, another way to escape corporate was to start a podcast myself, which I still have. And when I did that, two things happened. One, I made an intro for that podcast, another rap. And two, when I got my first microphone, I got a microphone that was good for uh, podcasting and music. So I didn't go like strictly podcast mic. I went music. So I was like, wow, this is something I'm really into. Like I want to keep making these raps. Started making raps for my videos. And I'm like, while I was in corporate, a way to express myself was making these raps and telling my story. And I didn't think about sharing them. I was like, this is just something I want to do. It's fun. Like I've been grinding so hard, like training. It's like, I just need to have some fun. So it was kind of an outlet for me. Uh, a couple of years go by. And when I quit my corporate job to do freelance photo and video, I had like a little more freedom. And I'm like, wow, I can uh, make more raps now. Let me see how good I can get at raps. It's just something fun to do again, add them to my videos as well. And so I just kept letting it evolve. Um, And I started to know when I started to show people my raps, I realized, oh, the raps I made a couple of years ago are about what I'm living right now, like living free. Like, because in the corporate, I was like using this like space of like, I want to quit my corporate job. I want to just rap for a living, like this fun thing. I'm like, oh my God, like they're coming true. So I'm like, wow, there's something to this rap thing that's very powerful. Uh, I quit my job, did freelance photo and video. And then last year I moved to California. And the reason for that move was just following fun. And I, my business partner was out here in California. We did media and marketing together. And being out here, I started performing for people because I was just like, hey, I do music too. Like they would watch my video. They don't know anything about the dunking. It was like a brand new chapter. So yes. they would just see, I was having to post more raps because I'm not dunking as much. I'm like, I'm still rapping. And I, when I'm playing in person, I had more people in person. I started to realize I liked performing my songs. And I'm like, I think this might be the new path. And then a big, it was like a year of like getting clear. I'm like, am I letting go of dunking? And I fear, I made a video of this on my YouTube, which you can check it out. But it was like, so confusing because I thought this 10 year journey felt like I was only continuing because of fear that I didn't achieve every goal that I set out to do. But then also I saw this new path of rapping where I'm like, what if this is possible? And it reminded me that feeling, that energy was the same as when I started dunking. I was like, I don't know if this is possible, but what if, like, what if I could become a dunker? Like, like I'm like, whoa. So I'm like, okay, this is the same energy. And it feels like on top of the mountain I just climbed with dunking that it felt like an even new, more expansive quantum level. I'm like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And I'm like, okay, I have all this excitement over here. I also have this dunk journey that feels unfinished, but yet I have all these lessons. I'm like, what if it was just a path for me to learn all these lessons for this new path? So I trusted that. And after a year of like contemplating, I'm like, let me just try this wrapping route. Yeah. It was hard to let go of dunking, but as soon as I started doing the wrapping or uh, open up to performances, every performance has been getting better. It's been like a month. I've had bigger and bigger crowds and not to say that that's what I'm trying to go for, but I've expanded so fast. And it reminds me of Duncan where it's like, oh, wow, I can do this. Now I have like performances uh, that I can learn how to work with the crowd. I can learn how to my training. I'm running a lot more to increase my lung. I'm just so inspired across the board to perform again that it feels so right. So now it's like taking people on that journey and it feels so exciting. And it's like, what's really exciting is that it's not like, a, it's a brand new journey that's an extension of the dunk journey that the dunk journey led to. So it feels like another level so it's not like starting over. It feels like a extension, which is super fun. It's super cool, man. Yeah, I think one thing I wanted, or what I took away from that, from that whole that whole story, and what <laughs> kind of led to that is, I think a lot of people go through, um, you know, maybe they have one thing that they start out with that they're really passionate about. Um, you know, sometimes those things have a natural kind of evolution, and then you know that some things have a natural kind of end. Right. And, and a lot of times people, um, may think like, well, dang, like I'm, I, I, I did all that for nothing. Like, you know, it's, it's over, but, yeah. but 
the le- the lessons you learn out of that can be transferred to something else. So whether something lasts, you know, for, for a year, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is, like the lessons that you take out of that, you're going to be able to transfer it into whatever you decide to do next. Right. So couldn't agree more. And one of the things that's really fun right now is like, I have all these skills. I'm way more aware. I can avoid all the mistakes I made about like just overtraining or doing different things that I'm now training again. And it's like, I can do it from such an expansive place with so much more clarity and more peace. Cause before I was like losing my mind at some points, like, can I achieve this? Why am I doing it? Like as I'm growing, but now I have all that evolution. And one thing that's been fun is uh, I see all the parallels in dunking. Like I'm so excited to perform and I realize how much I loved about that. And I'm, I'm sharing the same energy, but just in a different expression. It's, it's really, really bad magical it's so fun yeah one one thing i wanted to talk about too is you know i've listened to some of your rapping and it's like you know you're not the typical like drugs and in bitches <laughs> you yeah. know whatever it is, like you know you're not a typical rapper you rap on stuff that like you actually believe and care about you know a lot of these things that are on your podcast like you know you're you're rapping about um energy and like you know just you know, these philosophies that you have. So it's very different, sure. you know, I, and I feel like it's very courageous because, you know, you're coming into an industry that's very, I feel like, you know, everyone's kind of talking about the same stuff and you're coming in yeah. like doing something completely different. Um, so, so what gives you kind of that courage and like, what's, what's the inspiration there to, to just like, you know, be speaking on what you believe in and not like, you know, just trying to follow the status quo with, with other Amazing, rappers. Dude. Yeah. Thank you. That's a really great question. And so, um, the way I've been answering this question lately, because uh, first of all, I, it's been calling it conscious rap. And somebody also said yesterday, conscious rap sounds like it's already conscious, but consciousness is something we're striving towards. So it's it's more just like, it's not just conscious now, it's like rap that helps you raise your consciousness. Um, and so way I like to see music, which has helped my life so much, which is another reason why I'm transitioning to rapping. It's because like the same way dunking helped me so much, I want to inspire other people to find their dunking is like, the way music has helped me navigate my life is the same way I want to share music. Um, but when it comes to music, it's like everybody's just talking about their their time that they're living in right now. At least that's my experience as an artist and writing. It's like I can only speak from my heart right now and that's what's happening. So what comes out is conscious and rap because it's like this is what I need to say. Same way with dunking. It's like this is how I need to express myself right now. I need to go dunk. Like that's my method. So that's why it's coming up that way. I'm not like choosing like this route of that's what's popular right now. And I think that's actually where people kind of went a little wrong um, or maybe like fell into that trap. But for example, let's go back to the drugs and, and women. It's like, that was true for them at some point, right? That's like what they're striving for that. And there's nothing wrong with it. Even the violence, it's like they're sharing their story. That's how they healed and got through that time. Now, what I think happened is like got popular, maybe was playing in clubs, got popular. It's that people want to f- try to follow the success. They're not speaking from their truth and they're not going to last anyway because it's not been like the right energy. Now, what's cool is my inspiration is Little Dicky. And that's similar to the Andy Nicholson story where Little Dicky is just very similar to me and he had very similar thoughts. Like I can't resonate with growing up in a very harsh environment. So it's not going to be that inspiring, but he, is, he inspired me with like silly raps and also like words that I would use or different things. I'm like, oh, wow, it kind of gives me permission to rap the way I want to. But the way I see it is like the money, the drugs, the thing, that's their story. Great. Little Dicky almost went anti that where it's yeah. like, hey, I'm none of that, but uh, it's still a legitimate form of rap. It's still fun to listen to. And maybe there's some conflict there, but either way, it's like that's anti. And now it kind of feels like it's swinging back where it's like, okay, it's, it's a little bit of both. It's back to me. I'm kind of in the middle, not in the middle of those two, but just a different branch of that where I'm not anti the money and drugs. I'm just like back to authentic story. And this is just my story. Right. This is where I'm at in life. I think people like yourself, you're training people, but you're going down to the mindset. And when I'm rapping, it's like, I'm making music just like everybody else did. But the time that needs to be expressed right now is people want to hear these things or, and it's truly just a message I want to hear. Like I'm just yeah. having so much fun. And, um, uh, expressing what I see in the world and sharing my views of the world. And so co- courage is something that I think is my natural gift. I think I actually love to point out that I love human design. It's a, it's like astrology mixed with like different traditional things of quantum physics and all these different things to get to know yourself. So highly recommend it. I actually have a coach of mine that we can work with if everybody wants to work with getting to know their self. But my human design shows I have a defined heart center and that's like the ego manifester, not the ego mind, but it's a different use of the word. 
And that is like internal courage. Like I have very strong internal courage. And when it comes to dunking, there was nobody doing it. And I'm saying like, I'm, I'm not been going for it. Like that takes a lot of balls to film yourself to say you're going for yeah. something there's no instagram there's no proof of it there's just me saying i'm going for it so i know i have that courage and i know i like people up to step into that courage and on top of that so that's one way i have courage is that it's just in me it's one of my natural gifts but number two is when you find something so exciting i think it's a tony robbins quote is that's what dunking felt like and now that's what rapping feels like is you find something so exciting the possibility and the fun is so exhilarating that it pulls you through the fear. Like I barely, I just have to say, yes, I don't have to like fight anything. I have to actually fight the doubts, but yeah. the courage is like, people see me courage. I'm saying, I'm like, I'm having so much fun. It's like with your dunking, if, if you start dunking or training, people are like, how did you do that? How do you have the courage to lift that much weight? It's like, it feels amazing. Yeah. Like I don't have to try to have, to have courage. So that's right. the other thing is that when you find your natural gifts, the courage is within. Yeah, that, that was something I meant to go back on on your first answer was um, you were saying that was one of the things that like, gives you energy, but it sounds like it also gives you courage is like finding that thing that just like lights you up, you know, oh, yeah. the thing that you're chasing. Yeah. So how, because, you know, some people, um, you know, just a lot of times the average person, you know, before maybe they're able to chase their dream or their, what they, when they find their purpose and go for that, like, how can someone that's just, you know, maybe working a, a regular job, um, you know, cause I, I feel like a lot of the listeners are, are just, you know, the average person that's working, you know, a job, an office job. Um, how did they kind of like find that energy, whether it's, you know, maybe on the side, they're doing things that light them up. Um, but how, yeah. how can someone like that, you know, find that thing that lights them up, gives them that energy, um, and also like helps them break out of maybe a comfort zone that they're in. Yes, for sure. And that's kind of why I still love to open up energy coaching. So if anybody wants to talk to me, I love helping you find little tweaks to help you start mastering your energy and finding what lights you up. Uh, but my advice with nine to five is it the heart and the mind try to get clear on what your mind is saying versus your heart and that takes some time if you've never done that before it takes some time and the one thing is start noticing your language like when you say i know something like i know i love training or i know i love dunking or i know i love this or i know i want to do this that's your heart talking that's a knowing when you say i think or i should that's usually the mind talking like i think i need to do this path it's like so one is clarity. Try to get clear on what lights you up. Like if you have no restrictions, today was your last day on earth. Just try to have fun with that. And also look at that, when, what you did when you were a kid. I rapped when I was a kid. I did it in high school for fun. I dunked when I was five years old. Like these are like childhood things and there'll be clues. I love the quote by Steve Jobs is that you can only connect the dots looking backwards. So when I look back, it's very obvious how I got here. But when I was going through it, I'm like, whoa, this is like some of my songs are about I feel so crazy right now, but I have to let it out because if I don't, I'll overheat. That's my main song right now, music video coming soon about beaming genius. I'll say a few lyrics like I'm beaming, I'm glowing, I have a feeling, it's a knowing, can't control it. I just got to let it flow because if I don't, I swear I'll overheat. It's bigger than me. This is over Steve. He's just a human being. Remove the human. Let the being speak. So that's like those words. Thanks, dude. Those words came and it's like there was no purpose for that. It was just like I just felt like doing it. And so try to find those feelings like your gifts are naturally inside you and there's just a lot covering them so right. there's clues from your childhood there's clues from what excites you now and just try to see what would be fun what is like the first thing that comes that has fun and then what's the first step you can take towards that because initially when you say that's fun the mind comes in quick but where is that leading forget that don't worry about where it leads yeah. and then it says but how does that make money forget that remove the how just say, what would be fun? It's so, the heart is very simple. And then it takes courage. It takes courage to go towards that. But it's a fun journey. You're like, the fun will guide you and it leads to more fun. So the magic can happen when you do that. 100%, man. I, just while you were saying all that, I'm thinking my thing that is that right now is this podcasting. <laughs> because I'm, yes, just having, dude. Yeah, yes. I, I'm just having fun with it. It like lights me up. I feel like I'm just yeah. curious in people. Like, you know, I think that's one of my natural oh, yeah. gifts. Just like, I want to know more about you. I want to know what's making you click. I want to like highlight your gifts, share them to the world, you know, provide value Incredible, that way. Um, and yeah, it's like, I have no idea where this is going to lead, but I'm just having fun yes. doing it. And <laughs> the so, past couple of weeks. I love that. Yeah. Dude, 
keep going. That's super fun. And I like, I would like to say if anybody watched any of my videos or any of my music and they felt like inspired by it, that was me following that. So it's like proof that it's like, I had, I had the same exact thought, but like, where is this leading? Uh, there's no reason for me to dunk. Look where it led. It led to us connecting. It led to a dunk camp. It led to me having this huge growth thing, quitting my job, like just having such a fun life. And it started from that place of just what's fun. Just dunk. Let's see if I can. I didn't know if I could. I didn't know why. And so if you got inspired by any part of that journey, it was me following that same thing that I'm preaching about, which is just try to have no thoughts behind it. Just follow fun. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I think people yeah, get man. stuck in their head. You know, I think people can get stuck no, overthinking sure. for sure. Well, one yeah. thing I wanted to ask uh, you. To... Yeah. Sorry. What were you, were you going to say something there? Yeah, one quick thing is like, just remember life is short. Like look back on your life. Like right now, just have fun with like the what if of courage. Like, when I quit my job, it was terrifying, but it's like, let's see what happens. Just try to be open and say, would I regret never taking this step? Life is very short, just take one step. Anyway. For sure. Yeah, and then the thing I was gonna ask is, cause something you, you've you spoken on in some of your podcasts um, is like finding your higher self. Um, mm. First off, like, what is your higher self? Like speak a little bit to that. And then what's the best and easiest way to find your higher self? Mm -hmm. Love it. So for me, I used to say a lot more like finding your higher self and trying to become that higher self. But over time, I'm realizing the language is a little bit different where it's you are your higher self. It's underneath everything and you can be it in any state. Um, so the higher self is like your ultimate expression. When you're having fun, you feel like you're in flow with life and you're, you just feel balanced. Like you're able to express yourself, be able to be wealthy, healthy, have love in your life and just feel like you're expressing yourself in all ways. Because there's parts of my life, when I was at my corporate job, it was like I was dimming myself. I had to be one person here. Then if I was on the basketball court, I'd feel lit up. So yeah. higher stuff is like lit up in all areas at all times and just really believing in who you are. That's the higher self to me. Now, when it said, when I used to say, finding your higher self, sometimes these visualizations would help you. It's like when you get out of your mind and you say, what would be super fun? And it was just like, I'm doing this for fun. This is happening. I have this person in my life. It's like, that's tapping into the higher self. But that person is there now. And it goes back to what we were saying. It's like, you're not an elite athlete once you become a pro. You're, you, you're an elite athlete now. You train like one now. So you're your higher self now. Maybe you don't have the accomplishments or achievements but you are that person now and the and the more you embody that that's why i call it being the energy the more you embody it the faster it goes and that's what happens when you follow that joy you're being that person like you say i want to rap and that would be so fun well how do i get to match that vibration of being fun i have to be fun now you don't yes. just work hard work hard work hard and then fun happens no you have to work hard and have fun now and you're going to build both and so it's about Tapping into what your unique frequency is, that's your highest self when you're just feeling your best. And then how to find it or how to tap into it is how do you feel feel what that feels like and how can you take a step right now to act and be that person now? I like it. What I a like question. It. So so sounds like um, you know, what I what I took from that is basically like it's in you now. So maybe try to think about yes. what what's keeping you from from living mm -hmm. that now right so maybe maybe there's some yeah. barriers maybe there's some limitations some limiting beliefs yeah right? so yeah. so maybe that's some maybe it's more about removing what's what's keeping you from that right so and the, yeah 100 percent. and the reason why i always go back to fun is because fun is a frequency that really connects me to that higher self because i truly believe that's the energy of life the more fun we have it's a pure feeling dunking no reason just pure fun. Like how much fun would it be to do this? Journey? I'm not trying to monetize it. I'm not trying to be a pro dunker. There's no thing. There's no, there was no outcome. It's just fun. So if you can follow that fun, you're tapping into that super fine, high, high vibrational frequency of like, that's the essence of life. Because if you go deep into whatever you feel like you want to achieve, even if it's money or whatever, fame, all of it, it's like, why do you want it? It's like, it's fun or it's peaceful. You feel like you can relax. You feel like you can just be right. So that thing is not going to bring you that fun or peace. You can be it now and it'll elevate you to align with more of those things. Yeah. I, what, what that makes me think of is like, 
you know, people think you need to achieve this and then you're happy. Like, it's like, when I get the house, I'm happy. When I get the car, I'm yeah. happy. When I get the relationship, I'll be happy. But it's like, no, choose to be happy now. Like happiness is a choice, yes. right? Definitely, so, 100%. Very cool. And it's hard. There's waves of life. We have to we have to be gentle with ourselves. It's like, if you're like super unhappy and there's it feels like, how am I going to just be happy right now? Don't force it, but maybe just... Do one tiny step. There's, I believe there's always a tiny step that can change your entire vibration. And it doesn't have to be huge. And it doesn't have to be like changing your whole life. For example, if you're, everything is going wrong, you could be like, okay, well, I'm still alive. Like I can take a deep breath. And that one thing could change your energy. And it could be, instead of spiraling down, it could start spiraling you right up. Like that's what I love about the magic of life is like, there's always, if you're breathing, there's always one thing, one breath, we can do that. You can always take a breath. So if you have a breath, you can find a way to find that step to the upward spiral. Yeah, that, and it's just, that's just perspective and having gratitude, right? Because there's always something to be grateful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And gratitude, yeah. I, I think, is the, the quickest pathway to, to a positive mindset, right? And a higher frequency, like you're that's saying. That's the key, baby. So what you know, what does it mean? Maybe this is the same question. Would you say your higher self is higher frequency or is there a difference there? Mm. Ooh, good question. I think your higher self operates on the highest frequency. Okay. Uh, everything is energy, which is a shirt I'm wearing. Is I believe the whole universe is one energy source. Like it's, it's just a vibration and everything, it's like vibrations built on top of each other that turn into physical things. Because if you go down to the atomic level of every single atom, string theory says there's a vibration. So at the, if you go into this cup, this glass, you go out to the atoms, there's a vibration. So when you're, if everything's a vibration, the higher vibration, you're going to be just more in tune with the universe. And that's the thing. When you're feeling down, you're feeling low, it's not bad. You're still connected to everything. It's just not as pleasant. Um, but yeah, I think the highest self, I never thought of that. The highest self is operating on the highest frequency, okay. more bliss, more fun, more joy, happiness. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, um, cool. for the audience, you know, this is the elevate everyday podcast. Mm -hmm. I want to help, you know, everyone kind of elevate every day and your thing, you know, what we've talked about a lot cool. is like higher frequency energy, you know, so very in line, like how, what, what is one habit like one mm -hmm. thing that the listeners can take away start implementing in their life like one thing to help themselves elevate every day and you know achieve this higher frequency higher energy like what what's one little thing that you'd like to challenge maybe the listeners wow. to do yes first of all love elevate every day love <laughs> doing it one tiny step i would say right now what's coming to me is being yourself that's it and whatever method that comes in whether it's journaling and trying to learn about yourself or reading a book you like or speaking a certain way or whatever comes to mind when it says how can i be more myself you will you will take a step and that could be one small thing eating something you like it could be who knows watching this podcast you know anything that lights you up be yourself just try to be yourself awesome Awesome. And I think that it's kind of funny. One of the questions that I forgot to ask that I was going to was like, how can the average person kind of feel a little bit more free, a little bit more in control of their life? Mm. I think that's an easy way to do that. Like just being yourself, right? Would you it's, agree? Yeah. And when you, hundred percent, when you open up that awareness that I want to be my, more myself, you're going to see it everywhere. It's like, I said yes to this person, or I wore this for my job, or like all your different expressions will show you. And that will make you feel so free. That's what I love about rapping. It's pulling, dude, I, I would stop at some random party and ask if I could do on the mic. And I'm like, this is terrifying and embarrassing, but I, it was fun thought. It was a fun initial reaction. And I did it, had so much fun. And then I feel more free because now people know who I am and like in a way of like, they see my heart and my soul. And when I think of performing, when I'm even on running down the boardwalk, I'm performing like to my own music and I feel so free. Cause it's just, that's truly who I am is I want to do this. So it's like, imagine how it feels to be yourself in every single moment. That's going to bring a lot of freedom and control in your life. And it takes, I've worked with imposter syndrome in my life so much. Dude, the whole dunking journey was me, a short complex. I was the shortest out of all my friends. And it's like, that's how I controlled my life. If I'm going to take this disadvantage and express myself in a way. So every weakness you have that you think you have is truly a gift 
and a strength of yours. And when it comes to controlling your life, it's like, I didn't believe I could, or I didn't believe in myself. And the more I believe in myself, the more I, I'm saying yes to me, the more, more control you have over your life. Only you are limiting you. That's all it is. You have un no limits. And it's all about you mastering yourself. I love it, man. It's powerful. I love it. Uh, I, I resonate with so much that we're talking about right now. So, man, this so has been happy. awesome. <laughs> this has been awesome. I know the listeners, guys, like, you know, take some of this stuff to heart. I, I know that you're getting value out of this. Um, but what's one thing, Steve, that I should have asked you? Like, what what's one thing? Because you've Ooh. got lots of knowledge. So what do you think is one thing that I should have asked you? Uh, it's a tough one. You ask such good questions. I love the gifts. I love helping people tap into themselves. Let me think. What could you ask me? Um, maybe my latest song. What's the latest song I'm working on? Yeah. What's your latest song? Yeah. What What? Cool. What do you want to like kind of promote or as far as like your, your raps and your rapping and everything now, like what's your latest song? Where can people find you? All, all that type of stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Cause you ask questions that are hitting me super deep in my soul. And the only thing I can think of is like, what's happening right now. That yes. would be the only question. Like what's going on right this moment. Um, so yeah. Um, be the energy, Steve, energy, Steve on all platforms. You should be able to find everything I can help you with tapping into your higher self becoming yourself, mastering your energy. I love doing that, your energy coaching. I have a media company that helps with basically the same energy capturing, but through media. So from your brand to uh, creating content, editing and shooting it, and then to growth, growing your content. Uh, and then my performances. Uh, I love sh shining my light. And then when I shine my light, I light people up. And it's like, that's my ultimate expression. And what's really cool is like, my music is is taking me on a ride. So I have this latest song that I'm really inspired that I'm, I do at the end of my performances, which is called Destinations. And it's all about, I had this vision of where I want to go, which is one of your questions, which is why I actually brought it up. Like when you said, what is your vision for rapping? It's like, I see myself on a big stage and not just for, I, I used to think because I want to like be free of like in a way of like, okay, now I'm abundant. Now I can actually make money from rapping, but it's different now. It's like, I feel that stage of so many people where it's like, my dream came true. Like I just had to have this fun experience to build up to this. And when I had this thought of like a giant stage and everybody's resonating with my music, it feels inspiring because I was like, I, I felt like nobody coming from Boca Raton, Florida that made this dream come true, just like dunking. And then on top of that, the song is about every step on this journey is the destination. And the thought of wrapping that song at every performance and then getting to the stage is like a compound uh, experience that is so exciting like for you to hear this and to share this with your audience of like I'm gonna wrap that right now of like saying every step is the destination like I know I'm on this path already is a very powerful feeling and the song goes like what if I told you I have no idea where my path is what if I told you I left it up to the universe and it mapped it what if I told you I saw it all and it came true can you imagine I spoke the word and it happened I'm detaching I um, feel the passion I'm a magnet I'm living magic so basically, I can't explain how I got here, but if I'm doing it right now. Like this song is how I got to this giant stage. And like every time I perform that song, I get chills. And I'm like, this is like me trying to show you, like say it in the words as I'm doing the path. Like, I don't know what my path is. I left it for the universe to map it, how I'm going to get there. But this is the step I'm on right now. I know this is the right step because it's, it's so much fun. That's it. So that's, that's something I love sharing about because that for me is like so exciting for, for some people to resonate with that and then and then watch it happen like we get to go on this journey together so that's what's cool that's awesome dude yeah i had heard that song yeah, man. <laughs> so I, but dude anyways. i'll send it to you you should throw it at the end of this podcast and just play it then okay play it. cool and then um, <laughs> man i just want to say too like you know you're, you're kind of just getting started um, you know, officially with the rapping stuff, but I know that you, yes. if you just transfer this, like I was saying before, like if you just transfer the same energy and passion you did to the dunk life into this, like, it's just a matter of time. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just yes. a matter of time. So Dude, yeah, it's going to take I off. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. It means a lot. And what's what, why I'm so excited is like, I feel that too. Like I feel the similarities, but now dunking started with like no support and like such a child and like no awareness where it's going to take me. Now I have all this evidence of where Dunkin' could take me. And now I feel the same way. Like if I use all these things, like, oh my God, it's like inevitable. But anyway, I want to say 
thank you so much. Your questions yeah. were amazing. Thank I you. love the way we, you flowed with me and got me on this podcast. Like it was really effortless. And so I, you have a knack for that. It made me feel so good. I feel fully expressed. I feel like I got to share my message with the world. So like you said, your gift of helping people share their gifts. I resonate with that a lot. I feel great. And I'm so excited that you're doing this for people, dude. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, brother. Well, sweet. Yeah, of well, thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for being on, my man. Um, thank you to everyone listening to the Elevate Everyday podcast. Um, and make oh. sure to like this or smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Make sure to check every episode. I'm going to be having weekly guests, experts in different oh. topics. So make sure to stay tuned in. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every day. Every day. Yes, sir. Peace out, y'all.